periapical, peri means around, apic, apex, apical means apex, so the tip, so around the root tip, lucency, so dark areas, uh, lucent, radial lucency around the root tip. This is, can be pretty confusing because when you look at this incisor, you see that nice uh, periodontal ligament space here, but then you look at the canine tooth and the periodontal ligament space is nice here, boom, 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 and then it stops and there's this area of darkness. And you think, okay, this must be a tooth abscess. Then you look at the tooth and you check the pulp canal size and you compare it with the other tooth and you see, okay, it's the same. So, and there are no signs of trauma, nothing going on. The tooth is not discolored. So, okay, it's probably not an abscess. And there's something called a chevron sign. On the streets, you, you see them on the side of the road. This is a chevron sign. And there's a very nice uh, paper. You should um, go check out this toothvet.ca. This is Fraser Hale. And he has done a lot of nice uh, little um, papers. And this discusses that what is called the chevron sign. And you can get more um, info about it. But basically it means that around certain teeth there is a triangular shape of lucency. And this is to be considered normal. Okay, in incisors, you uh, may be in doubt sometimes because these two incisors look like they have a lucency here and it looks round. So it could be easily uh, said that, oh, this is an abscess or a granuloma or a cyst. So we have to remove them. But again, they're not discolored. There are no signs of trauma. The pulp canals are the same width as the adjacent teeth. So they they ought to be normal. And they are, because if you have a cross section of the bone, you will see normal structures here that are round. And this is completely normal. It's not an abscess. So this is a particular thing you have to keep in mind when you are evaluating incisors. When you have the backlight, you can really see the same as it would look like with an x-ray. You can see that round, loosened area. It looks like an abscess. It's not. It's normal. When you have an incisor, you are in doubt of, like this one. Again, look at the pulp chamber or pulp canal width. This is definitely wider. This dark line here is wider than this dark line here. It means that this tooth is dead. Okay, Because throughout the life of a tooth, it will get the, the pulp canal will get more and more narrow. And if the tooth dies, it will stop to narrow and it will be, stay wide. And the rest of the teeth will get more and more narrow. So that's the way you can tell the difference. This tooth is dead. And the root, where's the root tip? It's gone. It's resorbed. Okay. So this is definitely a pathological lucency. Sometimes they get very hard to see. The only reason I, I really wanted to get this tooth out because it had, an, uh, it had a fracture here. But looking at this root tip, you, you, okay, you don't see that distinct line like this here. You see a little bit, it's a little uh, blurry. And when you look at the different projection, you see also here, it's a little bit blurry. It's a little bit darkness here. And um, you, you check it from the other side. And you see a little bit of the same. Always, 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 if you are in doubt, take more angles. Just take more angles. Don't call the owner and say, oh, can I take two more pictures? It's a waste of time. Just take some more angles so, um, so you know uh, what's going on. And this is what came out. This tooth came out. It had a huge granuloma. Okay. The reason I speak about, I say abscess. You cannot say this is a tooth abscess unless you have submitted this for histopathology because this can either be abscess, granuloma, or cyst. But I usually say it's an abscess to the owners because they don't understand. If I say, oh, there's a granuloma, oh, it sounds terrible, they don't know. So I just call it an abscess just to be make it easy for the, for the owners. Um, the last thing is the molars. Let's look at some of the molars. When you have to determine, this is a common area when you are in doubt. Oh, is this an abscess or is this a lucency or not? This is completely normal. That's the chevron sign that we talked about, that little triangular lucency here. 
and also here it's not always triangular but there's a lucency and here this is a pathological lucency um, a true periapical pathological lucency tends to be wider than the diameter of the root tip so the cross the you measure across here if the if the round area of the lucency extends on either side of the root tip it's uh, wider then it's probably pathological but in this case that chevron sign that lucency it's not wider it doesn't have a bigger diameter than the root tip so this is normal always compare with the other side if you end out okay don't just submit don't send this picture to someone who's good at dentistry say does that is that a lucency send two pictures send from this side also the other side it's much much easier to interpret uh, this tooth was was uh, discolored and a discolored tooth is om is 93 percent of the time it's dead or dying okay so this tooth is definitely dead and a dead tooth can also cause um, endodontic disease so you'll see this lucency here also again these are some examples of some uh, real lucencies right here and when you see a lucency like that you can do endodontic treatment so you can do a root canal therapy unless it has tooth res uh, resorption or uh, periodontitis like here so it's not the best candidate this one it has bone loss here bone loss here you may resolve it by removing this and this but it's going to be a long journey for this tooth and this owner so probably best to extract it this is another case of a lucency around this uh, root tip here you can see it's more like a shadow see and again this is a fracture there's a complicated fracture of that tooth and you again you see a slight shadow here and take some more projections please just to be sure and you see it's shadow here and there's also up here once you see many pictures of this it will get easier and, and easier um, something I just want to show you is something called perioendo lesion so if you have a lucency here you see this this is a true pathological lucency you ask yourself um, why why did this lucency come here is the tooth fractured no it's not fractured so where did the bacteria enter this tooth they entered from the sides of that root and it means that the bacteria came perio so from the sides outside and they they entered the dentine which is a, has a, a lot of open tubules so tubuli which is holes in the dentine once the dentine gets exposed those holes are just big enough so the bacteria can enter the tooth that's why when you uh, fracture a tooth enamel comes off those tubuli are exposed and bacteria can enter so when bacteria enter in here the bacteria will kill the pulp and make the pulp dead and then you have an abscess granuloma assist here so that's called a period lesion this is a just an example of how tricky it can be to evaluate this was actually normal and normal and but you know what this root was it was this one so the palatal root of 109 had a big uh, granuloma so it was right here it's very hard to see when you take some different projections you may with some good will you may see okay there may be something here but it's not really convincing is it but this one is more convincing you see here the area here so this also had a apical uh, problem yeah on if you have a ct scanner this is obviously easier to see than on um, dental x-ray the reason for this was a crack in the crown okay so always examine the mouth um, when you can okay that uh, first molar is always very tricky to evaluate and it looks like it has like eight roots almost but um, see here and here and here and here but that's completely normal if you look at this book i'll show you the book in a little bit 
these structures are normal. It's supposed to look like this. Okay, so you can study that a little bit. These are some of all these grooves and overlapping each other. It makes it look like it has a hundred roots. Today I actually extracted one of the uh, 109 and it had not three roots, it had four roots. So that's why I always do the post-op x-ray because I was sure I got everything out. I just took the x-ray because we have to. And there was one more root sitting right here at the vocation area. So always do the post-op x-rays. This is the book um, that this, uh, these um, images are from that you just saw. Uh, with that 109 and I highly recommend this book this was also the pictures uh, from the incisors the bone is from this book so it's a very very nice book uh, you can get it on Amazon or, or whatever